ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णापूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 ओ ब्रह्मानंद परम सुखद कवल ज्ञानमूर्ति द्वंद्वातीत गगन सदृश तत्वस्यादिलक्ष्यम एक विमलमचल सर्वधी साक्षिभूत भावातीतुणरहित सद्गु तम नमा ओडोरेशन टू सद्गुरु हू इज ब्रह्मन द गिवर ऑफ सुप्रीम ब्लिस एम्बॉडिमेंट ऑफ प्योर कॉन्शियसनेस वन विदाउट ए सैकंड वास्ट एज ईथर इनफिनिट eternal beyond the three gunas and their modifications the supreme precept yoga vashishtha in upsham prakarana and we are dealing with section 45 that's a famous story of the yoga vashishtha very intriguing interesting entertaining inspiring <laughs> elevating <laughs> sublimating <laughs> the story of Brahmin Gadhi, and probably that was that name fascinated the family of Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> Gadhi, Ga, is movement Gati that moves towards enlightened intellect, Dhi, Buddhi, Dharma. Where that intellect becomes enlightened, and Gadhi. But let's follow the story and understand the insight, the Vedantic insight that is being being given through this story. And later we'll know that your own story is more intriguing than all the story you are hearing. so story containing stupidity <laughs> distract as well as amazing glory you don't have to look for different rasa from anywhere shivashita continued telling the story of we have already introduced to you that there was a brahmin gadhi in koshala country very great devotee of lord vishnu in the process of his practicing prayer which he did it with great austerity he entered into the lake or a river and while within the lake he would offer prayers or satnam and so much so that even when he ducked himself down his mind is working with instead of diving to look for fishes he he dives into deeper waters of his mind while deep in while in deep water he practiced profound meditation one time he was practicing that meditation 
within the lake and Lord Vishnu appeared, called him out and asked him that he is pleased with the devotee Gadhi that he would ask any boon and Lord Vishnu will grant him. And Gadhi asked the boon. Gadhi's mind was more fascinated by the by the world and how it's the mystery about all things. He said he didn't want to close up this page in at once. <laughs> he asked, May I have insight into the extension of your Maya? I want to I'm curious to see how much your Maya And Lord Vishnu granted the bone and saying that having gained that insight, you will be led to Mukti liberation. Now, some time passed. One time he entered into the water thinking, what has happened? Lord Vishnu gave me the bone and I have not experienced anything different. But right at that moment when he ducked himself in, he passed on into a different level, a kind of superconscious ecstasy, uh, stepping beyond the normal level. As if you go to sleep and suddenly fall into a dream. You move into a dream world. You fall into sleep and move into the dream world. <laughs> he fell into the lake and moved into a vision. All these are stories. Shouldn't go after a literally <laughs> thinking is exactly precise. Now what happened? Just like when you enter into dream, you have no expect. What happens later you realize is a complete miracle. Sometimes you find yourself, even your identity has changed. You're a human being, you become a duck. <laughs> Fly. Now, this is a mystic vision, similar to the dream when you go to sleep. And broad point of view, that's what's happening always, until you attain absolute liberation. Otherwise, just moving from one dream to another. Now, what type of dream experience he had? He had a very sudden, surprising and kind of a shocking experience. He saw as if he had a vertical vision watching. It's like comes your vision in the iPad. It looks he saw himself dead, but his himself was not exactly his identity. In dream, there is some other personality, but to him that is his experience. He is dead. And then he finds all his close family around him grieving. He's more intent upon looking at the dead body and sees dead body doesn't make any 
change in the in the face their body is completely untouched by all that was going on so subtle insight is settling in in his experience that even though all this happens if you are dead to the world you remain to be the same face everything gets effaced your face becomes like the sky okay let me not go too much in that direction <laughs> let me get back to the story so what he sees that he is whole family of his near and dear ones are crowded they are all grieving he himself in his normal practical identity as gadhi he didn't have a mother mother had died and he was unmarried he was brahmachari but here in this vision he sees himself a full fledged grihastha householder where wife and children they are all grieving and then with curiosity he goes on waiting what happens the dead body is taken to cremation ground and cremated and he is watching all over it subtle insight also as at this stage he is simply curious what's happening and then he sees the soul of that dead body which is he considers himself in simple way of saying he sees himself dead cremated and sees himself reborn he experiences the misery of dwelling within the womb of his mother the baby is not just left inactive baby has to learn prenatal education as a start <laughs> after being born he saw himself as a growing child in the chandala household as a brahman generally even while doing upasana and everything the mind is always thinking let me be away from chandala no chandala will come no chandala shadow should fall on him <laughs> that chandala he pressure was so deep in him <laughs> that he himself becomes the chandala time rolled on time is that which goes on rolling constantly as a chandala chandala means ch- outcast and if you go into deeper meaning cha is conduct how you conduct yourself kriya andala if your kriya is obstructed kept into a egg stage not route we hatched then is chandala if you don't know, were not <laughs> in village homes is the word to have to scold a person <laughs> you Yeah. 
if you do something <laughs> nasty, especially in relation to things that that are impure. So as a Chandala, he became a boy of 12. Soon he grew up to be a boy of 16, of year of age. Handsome boy with broad shoulders, well-built body and dark complexion. He took to the profession of the Vyadhas. Vyadhas are hunters and their profession is to spend the whole day chasing the deer and then finally bringing the deer dead body on their shoulders. Welcomed by all the new the relatives, near and dear ones. I don't want to do the time. <laughs> but that again is highly allegorical. The world, broad process, the world you are in is a kind of a hospital. All souls are suffering from bhava vyadhi, the disease of the world process. Because you have that disease, you have to come to the hospital. And this is the world. So to be treated of your vyadhi. The soul suffering from vyadhi is vyadha. Your being habituated to hunting is your, the symptom of your disease. As long as you have to hunt for deer, but here you understand de the word deer as a pun. What seems dear to you? <laughs> you go, that's what you were hunting day by day. And what's dear to you is not really dear. You are, you are also like chasing mirage. Looks wonderful. Objects of the world seem quite desirable. When you attain certain stage of material prosperity, you feel you have attained the big thing, biggest thing. But it takes us time to realize it is not because you have not attained even your physical body, you can't sustain it. Everything moves away. So, as long as the soul is gripped by ignorance and goes on hunting for pleasure, he is like a hunter. And as long as the soul views itself as a body, physical body, it's a chandala, outcast. In his youth, he was wedded to a chandala lady and lived a householder's life. He spent some time in amorous sports with his wife in the beautiful surroundings of the forest. And just as simple seeds of thorny plants give rise to thorny bushes, so too the couple became parents of several typical Chandala children who were ugly looking and cruel nature. <laughs> and he is, his name is Katanja. Anja term relates to that mystic ointment that allows Anjana, that brings beauty to your vision. 
but his name is Katanjana, he cuts it. And also the word Katanja relate to thorny bushes. Looks beautiful with few flowers, but hardly you reach out to the flower you get thorn. You get into a dilemma. <laughs> what you do? <laughs> Go after the thorn, pick the flower. So now we are coming to the stage, he is with so much large family and for a while such a sense of tremendous prosperity. So many children who are going to have, he will have grandchildren and he will have the whole world waiting for generations and generations, all secure in his hands. And even though all the children are so ugly looking and cruel nature, but that was me. <laughs> In his mind they are so well progressive, not like those cowards, sitting like rabbits, talking about <laughs> spiritual things and such sanghas. Time rolled on and this Chandala named Katanja began to age. He developed a large family consisting of sons, grandsons. They missed the daughters. <laughs> Other relatives. But soon Adversity visited them in the form of a persistent famine. It didn't rain for many years and living conditions became difficult. To his great sorrow, Katanja saw death and destruction all around him and all his family members passed away one by one. You can imagine all the pain and sorrow. If they all passed away at once, that that itself is a big sorrow. But he was able to. He was off the time under the water. <laughs> Experienced each sorrowful situation. This artistic writing to make you understand the Maya. Because <laughs> you are interested in extension of Maya. Now he became alone in, the, in his worldly life. Remembering the children and relatives, he shed many tears of grief for a long, long time. And one day he renounced the forest where he was born and started wandering through various countries. In the course of his wanderings, he entered into the capital of a country in the Himalayas, inhabited by a certain hill tribe called the country of Kira. This is another mystic country, Kira, he kind of different from Chandala. Town, Kira town is very highly civilized, progressive, and where people are be being ruled by a great king. But now, when he enters, the king had just died. On that very day, the king of Kira had died, and finding that the king had no heir, the ministers 
followed an ancient custom of selecting another king. Kingdoms used to have their own custom. Normally, the eldest son of the king will inherit the kingdom. But so happened that the king didn't have any progeny. He died. Now, another alternative for the political party was to let an elephant, an auspicious elephant, transfer that when used in temples, etc., carry a garland, and whomsoever the elephant places the garland on the neck, no question asked, that person will become the ruler. Now, if you want deeper understanding, <laughs> led by your karmic process, you gain different positions in the world. Having left your previous life and all near and dear ones, now you enter as if into a different country. If you are not spiritually pushed, here Gadi is being pushed spiritually, therefore he is encountering that elephant. If you are not spiritually backed up, then you will be chosen by the horse, not by the elephant. Horse is mind that is without control. Like horses are good in your chariot, but if they are uncontrolled and they just drive your chariot. So that type of horse would have chosen you to be a king. You will be, in, in brief, regulated and empowered by fickle-minded horse. But then since he had that boon, he is now empowered by elephant. Elephant is Shraddha based strength. Let me get back to the story now. <laughs> so the elephant puts the garland on his neck and soon the royalty began to glorify him and he was given all royal dress and crown and seated on the, and all the ritual was made to make him king and he didn't spill out his identity. He kept completely quiet. <laughs> By divine accident, the elephant placed the garland on Katanja, and soon he, has, he was a hailed king and brought to the palace in the midst of great rejoicing. There he was bathed, perfumed, decked in royal clothes. He then shone like a king and began to rule the Kira country in the Himalayas. To the people of that country, his identity as a Chandala was unknown. And they knew him by the name Gavala. The literal meaning of Gavala, Ga is your Gati. Gati towards the goal. Vala, having that strength to follow your goal for attaining enlightenment, Gavala. And it also implies that therefore that strength that you get is out of the cows, the Upanishadic wisdom. So it could be Gavala or it could be Gwala <laughs> or Gauvala. play of words, but 
interesting. Assisted by able ministers enjoying royal luxuries, and attended on by many queens, King Gavala became a successful ruler. Section 46. Sage Vashishtha continued. Katanja ruled over Kira country for eight years. And in spite of his being a Chandala, he came to possess excellent royal qualities. Guided by his skilled ministers, surrounded by beautiful queens, decked with royal robes, King Gavala appeared as a handsome ruler. He became a very prominent ruler, very well recognized. He became famous for his compassion, generosity, acts of nobility, and various good qualities. So much so that it seemed as if he had forgotten his previous identity as a Chandala. But one day when he was without his royal ornaments, in subtle point, you can have good karma, can give you all, but the spoiler of all that is waiting in your unconscious. So, no matter how prosperous you are, prosperity is never secure. And how it is happening, you can see now, psychologically, he misses, he began to miss his old style freedom going after the deer, running into the forest, and meeting his relatives. So one day, suddenly it came to his mind, what has happened to my previous real identity? He looked around, nobody was there, so he sneaked out through the back door. <laughs> took away all the royal dresses, put on things that look like the old time. But one day when he was without his royal ornaments, he became overcome by the urge of acting like an ordinary old identity. So disguised in simple clothes, avoiding the main passage, that was guarded by royal officers, he slipped into the royal gardens for the sake of mere amusement. One not amused with all the big glory. Something is waiting in your mind, catches you to your previous identity. <laughs> and while he was amusing himself, and probably singing some songs of old times. <laughs> it so happened that at the same time, a group of chandalas passed by the road near the royal gardens singing and dancing. Same place where he was, pre previous identity was. And some people, now, Things had changed as that country where he was born. The troubles had gone away and people were now recovering. And in the recovery process, a whole group of Chandalas were passing through King Gavala's kingdom with the idea of getting some help from the great king. Gavala is very generous. And as they are passing by the royal palace, surprised to see their old friend Katanya <laughs> in the royal garden. The leader of the Chandalas 
recognize the king as Katanja, the Chandala who once lived with them. Overjoyed, the old Chandala shouted, O oh, Katanja, how happy I am to see you. Are you employed in the royal service? Do you entertain the king with your songs? Now you can know he knew how to sing. I am so pleased to see you. My friend, my dear one, after such a long time of separation, I have met you. And all the queens are hearing <laughs> from the windows. And surprised to see his <laughs> clothes change <laughs> and himself acting. So is that a question of any further verification? <laughs> King Gavala ignored the words of the Chandala leader and hurriedly proceeded to the palace. <laughs> but the words of the Chandala leader had been heard by the ministers and the queens who were seated in the upper balconies of the palace. They all now realized that their king was a Chandala and outcast. When the king returned to his palace, he was ignored by his queens and ministers. Now, no longer, because that's the old time, and also since the story, I want you to understand that here, associating with a Chandala was considered one of the un most unforgivable sins, for which only the remedy was to go through self-immolation, implying create fire and jump into it. The old time villagers did all this very easily, no matter how tragic it appears. It was Sati Pratha for a long time in India. Now he has to see a terrible torture in his mind. All those people who lovingly helped him, etc. They die one by one, burning into burning fire, burning fire. Soon the news of his identity, true identity, spread to all the officers and citizens of the country. And just as a dead corpse is ignored by all, so too the king was ignored by all. There's an echo of another level of understanding, insight, vairagya develops. Vairagya develops in your mind, then you look around. What are you seeing? First look within yourself. If you can't believe it, go into a hospital. Get x-rays. <laughs> see what you look like. <laughs> then, then see the world, how they look like. So, so you have slipped into a Chandala world. You have to handle it. This is a very gross way of saying. But Vedanta allows you to do that. And there is a thing, no harm, rather this is a fact of life. You have to understand that that's the basis for your aspiring for attaining liberation. If you are constantly fulfilled and satisfied with how you are, with body identity, then it becomes a big obstacle for your attaining and light. But body identity has to be viewed in a perfect objectivity and with open-hearted understanding. 
you don't want to stay in the body for 500 years. How will you look? <laughs> I'm joking with this. <laughs> cutting, cutting the matter short, the idea is, why don't you start recognizing who am I? irrespective of where your body is. Your I am is totally different from your body. If you are the body, that you are a, you are a dead corpse, ignored by all. This was the king's experience. Found himself like a dead corpse. Looked all around and everyone ignores him. His joy is gone, his face turned into a withering flower. He divested himself of his royal elegance and became the very embodiment of inauspiciousness. In those days, any association with a chandala was considered sinful and humiliating. And the one, only one way out was to, to expiate the sin was to be consumed in the burning flames of fire. So the women of this palace, as well as many people from kingdom, built burning pyres and jumped into them. Pathos prevailed everywhere and their chaos and disharmony in every direction. Sarvam Dukkham Vivekira. <laughs> While in the storyline, he is seeing this. In advanced way of understanding, if you have developed Vivek Buddhi, you understand transience and perishability all around you, but not with a sense of pathos but a sense of joyous discovery that you don't belong in that level of being perished. You have, you are. So am I am that am I. So it is not just shocking experience that again spiritual students make big mistakes. They associate by practice of vairagya with dejection, misery of the mind, and stress. But vairagya is totally a different attain. It's like a bird, it enjoyed a whole tree all the time, but now looking at the wings, flies. And when it flies, considers the whole forest little, bigger forests are waiting. Deeply wounded in his heart and considering himself as the cause of the sorrows of so many people, the king decided to end his life him, himself by jumping into fire. He prepared fires, set it, he prepared the setting and they set it on fire. And having entered it, was soon turned to ashes. And at that stage, suddenly he emerges out of the river and found it was like a dream-like vision. He emerged out of the water and having completed his ritual worship, hastened to his cottage. Gazi was, must realize, all this happened in short duration. O Rama, Gazi was immensely astonished at his unique experience. He began to reflect within himself 
Who am I? What have I seen? What have I done? I am a brahmachari. My mother, mother has passed on. How is it that I saw myself surrounded by mother, my wife and other relatives? How is it that I was myself a chandala with a large family, living a life of hideous deeds? Surely all this that I have seen has been workings of Maya. Now he remembers, that's what the boon he had asked. <laughs> to know about the extension of Maya. And he thinks that he has learnt the lesson. But keep <laughs> waiting. <laughs> Something more is coming up. We'll continue next day. Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukma Bandhanan Mrityor Mukshyama Mritat Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyant Matashidduka Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Om Shri Ramayana Om Namah Shiva